looking at just a specific channels, I think it's also about the audience that, that, that you want to be targeting as well, because, because, you know, you know, we, we have a brand um, in the portfolio called Savile Beverage Company, um, which is an, a very sort of premium alcohol free RTD. Um, and, you know, we've been trading for the last sort of um, three years and we've been really focused on, um, you know the out of home channels, and 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 what what we've done here, and this is maybe a, maybe a sort of good example of how brands should be thinking is, um, you know, um, we're we're in this space where um, we have um, we're in the alcohol free uh, category, so the low to no category. Within that category, um, uh, spirits have been a sort of domination within that. So you know, brands like Seedlip um, that come in sort of seventy cl um, spirit. Um, bottles um and we've come along as a as an alternative in a 250 mil can so then when we start to look at the out of home channel we we what we we start to do is go okay we don't have that many like for like competitors within um the low to no rtd space um so these are 250 mil can cocktails but we do have quite a lot of competitors that are trying to um uh explore the out of home, specifically the sort of on trade, so like bars, restaurants, stadiums, sort of large events. Um, but essentially, how we look at it is, we start to look at, um, you know, okay, so what what are the operational challenges of trading with a alcohol free spirit? So we and and by the way, I'm not here to sort of um, say anything bad about alcohol free spirits, but I can just take a sort of honest and open observation. Um, the alcohol-free spirits, um, you know, in a environment like a let's choose an account, so um, Chelsea Football Stadium, for instance, so which is one of the Compass sites, um, they need to have an alcohol-free option. But on the bar, they have staff that are um, uh, being paid ten pounds an hour. Um, they don't necessarily know how to mix an alcohol-free spirit. Um, so therefore, what our sales pitch, what how we go and attack that situation and say, okay, we're ready to serve. Therefore, um, you know, we can provide a we can provide a product that's operationally consistent. There's um, the speed of service is um, much quicker because there's less ingredients. You just open the can and, and serve. Um, so what we try and do is we 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 try and um, look at the pain points from the operators. So we pick a channel and we go. These are the pain points that these operators are having, um, and that can be in that category can be replicated that sort of strategy in lots of different areas. So whether we're, um, you know, we've got a listing on British Airways because they don't necessarily want to be mixing too many drinks there. It's an easier serve. We we're doing quite a lot in uh, on cruise ships. Again, we're doing quite a lot in offices in that category because again, an office they don't necessarily want to. They don't have all the facilities to make a alcohol-free cocktail. So uh, with lots of this, um, and I hope that's sort of an interesting example because what we're trying to do is also look at look at where where the pain points are from the customer and go, okay, well, how can we sort of address that for them? And and I think that's sort of what, what we've done. Um, one thing that I would say that would sort of counter that is, um, you know, we are with Savile Beverage Co., we are an alcohol-free cocktail. Um, you know, it's an RTD. And RTDs are not necessarily widely adopted in um, very sort of premium outlets. So, you know, um, they can be, but not all the time. So, for instance, you know, we, we've we learned with that brand that we do not win in five-star hotels because, you know, in five-star hotels and looking at that sort of luxury hotel sector, they will always want to use a spirit, an alcohol-free spirit, and they will also want to mix that drink, you know, using it. And actually psychologically when you're in a five-star hotel even if your drink takes uh five seven minutes to come out you don't care actually and sometimes it re it sometimes it's a it's a positive because you're thinking they're taking such care over my cocktail and the craft of it that you're sort of sitting there and you're sitting in a lovely cocktail bar there's an ambience you've got some delicious um nuts some olives it's all part of the experience so um so, so, so when looking at that channel strategy, it's it, it's not necessarily just looking about um, okay, well, where's where's the gap in my exact category and for the light for lights? It's, it's also zoning in on what what are the pain points and operational issues that some of these end customers are having, and how can I kind of come in and solve them? Mm, I love that. 
it's all the, the original question was how do you find that that slipstream or how do you find the oil well sure. with lots of gold or oil yeah. where no one else is looking and i think if you focus on the operational pain point yeah. and really dig into that that will be the compass to find that oil well where and as you say the delicious example of of savile is it's like okay well in a cocktail bar, if you just, if I went to the the Ritz and some guy just poured a can and in, in a thing and said, there you go, mate. I'd be, I imagine I was on a date. I'd be like, oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> Fucking yeah. hell. There's, that's an arm and a leg, 18 quid. Yeah. But then as you say, you go to Chelsea Football Club, it's like, well, time is of the essence. People are on £10 an hour. You need speed of service. And I think that's really useful for listeners is instead of looking, really zoning in and saying, what is the operational pain point? And that will lead you to the, that's the compass to, to the, the beautiful oil well down the road. Um, how do our listeners develop the, op, instead of all, all the bells and whistles, how do they dive into the operational pain point mindset to unlock that new channel? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, think, I think you've just got to put your shoe on the other foot, right? Um, so I think, again, this goes back to what, I often see with early stage businesses, it's, 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 it's brand, brand, brand all the time. Um, and I think it will be in, I think maybe because it's grocery is such a different, a, a sort of a different beast and sort of how you look at it, but maybe we just focus on the out, out of home um, because um, within the out of home, there's, there's, there's obviously a lot of different nuances to that. And, you know, if we, if, 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 if for people that, um, you know, just to be sort of very, clear on sort of what out of home is how i define out of home is you know anywhere um where you will basically be consuming a product outside of your house just to sort of be clear so so that sort of opens up sort of every sort of huge amount of channels so i think and 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 you don't need to be an expert in this i think what you've just got to be doing is you know is thinking about what the dynamics of those channels are going to be so you know if you're thinking that you are let's say um let's focus on, let's say, the business and industry channel. So let's say you're a contract caterer and you're buying in drinks for an office. Your, your mindset is thinking um, specifically around the needs of your customers, who are basically the workers who are working in that environment. What do they want between their hours of work? Um, so, you know, that's the way that you've got you've, you've to then think about it and then go, and, and, and also, you know, in certain, um, you know, in certain of these out of home channels, you know, these these buyers are buying multiple different products, you know, and they're not going to be necessarily so laser focused on the category. So, in the likes of a grocery category, that grocery buyer is buying, um, you know, if they're buying, um, you know, in the world of drinks, you know, they're buying, they're the soft drinks buyer, you know, they're going to be completely, they're going to be, they're going to know every single data point with it or they should know most data points and that what's driving the category what's driving the growth if let's say you're in an environment where you're, you're speaking to a contract cater that's buying um you know food and drink for an office that their insights in terms of um you know the sort of category are going to be completely different it's going to be it's going to be a completely different sort of sort of touch point so i think what you've got to do is sort of you've you've got to you've got to then obviously amend your pitch slightly depending on um, you know, um, obviously what category you're going into, but then understand. So if, if I was going to give an example, if I was sort of, um, pitching, um, in, into an office, you know, obviously what are, what are offices now, you know, again, offices are looking at lots of different, you know, the larger offices, you know, lots of them have, you know, sustainability agendas, therefore, you know, they're, they're looking at putting less plastic in, in their offices, you know, hence we've seen some really good sort of water brands, you know, that are in aluminium cans do really well in those office spaces. We've seen, you know, functional beverages do do quite well in offices, but actually I would actually say sort of the more functional actually, um, you know, um, you know, you know, in terms of that sort of consumer, depending on the office, you know, Facebook and, and, and Twitter might have a sort of audience where, you know, they're far more up to date on trends, therefore something more functional might be uh, suited for them, wherefore maybe a more traditional office it might might not be. Um, and therefore maybe a, mm. a Causton Press um, might be, which is a, a sort of very delicious, healthier soft drink, but it's not a kombucha. So, you know, you, you start to have a think around, you know, firstly what the sort of operators are sort of 
uh, where their pain points are. And then you sort of just start to, you know, tap into that consumer piece as well and sort of go think, you know, you know who, who are, you know, what's, you know, in terms of sort of the employee base, what that business stands for. And, and then you sort of ta- tailor your pitch, pitch that way. Yeah, I love that. So it's it's case by case, almost doing the research beforehand, saying, you know, so probably PwC, I remember doing a sampling session there. It was riveting, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, uh, but the, but that's going to be a very different vibe to Google where we did, we did a thing at Google and it was like, you know, as you can expect, it was, you know, it was super, super fun. And I think getting, tapping into that, that problem, operational problem first, yep. and then actually the mindset and, and the context of the office, the context of the office is super interesting. That's very valuable. Very valuable. You said earlier, there's a lot of nuance to out of home, mm-hmm. which is, which is really interesting. You know, grocery kind of, it's not as easy as this bish, bash, bosh, get, Bob's your uncle, but like, mm-hmm. you know, you get the listing, they put you in the stores, you yep. do the media plan, and then you go and sample like crazy and it, it's either, either sink or swim, but without of home, it's such a incongruous, perplexing beast. 